Okay, doke. So now we have our garment separated. It's time to do the weight painting. So I'm gonna click on the bones. Actually, wait before I even do that, I'm gonna go back into object mode, I mean edit mode, and I'm gonna turn off that UV sync because that can be problematic down the line. Okay, now that's turned off. Give me, give me one second. Okay, sorry about that. Um, sneezing again. So now we have our um, garment selected. It's time to start doing some troubleshooting. Um, I like to separate two pieces because just in case um, weights from something else, like sometimes in the very odd chance that arm weights may have transferred down on the leg, I don't want to just remove the weights from the arm and totally lose the weights up here. So when it's on separate ones, it makes it a little bit easier, at least in my opinion. So um, let's click on the bones. Let's get weight painting. First, you want to click on the bones and press R and see if there's any trouble spots, seeing if it's moving the way you want. When we move the arm here, it seems like it's doing a pretty good job. Same here, and chest, not bad. No, oh, that's terrible. So what we're going to do is transfer weights from uh, the body to um, the t-shirt. So what, how do you do that is you click on the body always the body first then or the template first then your garment that's how the order works and you have to follow that order so what I'm gonna do is click on the body I'm gonna hold down shift select the t-shirt and then I'm gonna go into weight paint mode and you'll see that the clothes will turn blue if the body or your template turns blue then you did it in the wrong order you want to make sure that your garment that you want the weights to transfer to turns blue which it did and now we're going to go over here to tools in the weight paint mode and we're going to scroll down until you see weight transfer and when you do so you'll see this little box where it shows up as this all nearest face all and that's pretty much what you want to use when you're doing a full transfer like this we already made a video showing how to transfer uh, independent weights to it so you may want to check that out just in case you don't want to transfer at all um, if you see more options than just all nearest face all, then you have a higher version of Blender and I'm shaking my fist at you because I said 2.72. <laughs> it's a lot easier and a lot simpler and a hell of a lot faster. So I totally suggest that if you're just starting out. So I can't help you if you use anything else. Alright, so let's try the rundown again and see if the weights are moving properly. So let's grab the waist and you see it's moving a little bit better it might be better if I take off those pants so let's take the pants and move it to a different layer quiet back there <laughs> try the shirt again transfer the weights I guess that's as good as it's gonna get Maybe if I use the pelvis and I add a little more weight here, I want to use mix. Turn the strength up. Try some weight around here. So that makes it work a little bit better. Now let me show you what I just did. What I just did was called weight painting. And what you are really doing is, um, let's see, the best way to describe weight painting. <clears throat> weight painting is Blender's visualization of bone heat on your bones to your garment. The more weight or heat that a bone has on the garment the more control that bone has over the garment so if you want the bone to have more control over your garment you're going to want to make it hotter if you want less control that bone have less control over you're going to make it colder now cold is represented by the value zero or the color blue and f most control is the number one and it's hotter and is represented by uh, the color red. Just think of it as those old cartoons where something is really hot 
uh, it's like burning and blinking red and when something's really cold it's ice blue and the colors in between are kind of like you know green and yellow and stuff like that going up to uh, that blue to red um, I guess more like those heat vision things is a better use of it than saying a cartoon but y huh yeah like the predator <laughs> So the hotter something is, or the redder it is, the more control it has. The colder or bluer it is, the less control it is. So if you don't like the way something is moving, try adding heat in, um, to it or removing heat and see if it works. In this case, I wanted the garment to stick more at the pelvis around the waist. Um, so when it was when it was before, it was blue. So when we went to go bend, you see that, oh well now it's going to stick. Let's see. And of course, you know, when I do the tutorial, the actual it is going to stick and not work. So when I go to move it, it's moving kind of weird. I think it was more heat around this bottom part of the shirt. There you go. So when we go to move it, you see it moves a lot with the, <laughs> hang on, I'm trying to describe it. Okay, I want the bottom of the shirt to stick around the waist of her pants. When I go to move this bone right here, you see the bottom of the shirt is bright red, which means that this bone has full control over this part of the garment. So when I go to press R and rotate it, you'll see that the shirt is moving in a manner I don't want. So I want to remove control from this bone, on the, the, remove the control the bone has on the bottom part of the shirt. So what I do is I turn it down to zero and I start cooling off the heat that it has here. However, um, Alvastar and Second Life does not like it when you don't have any heat at a certain object, like a, it's on a mesh. So I need to give this some sort of um, weight or some heat. So I'm going to click on the pelvis bone here, the pelvis, and I'm going to put all the heat that was there right around the bottom it. So it's saying that the pelvis has all the control. So when we go to move the shirt again, you'll see that it's sticking around to the pelvis because the pelvis isn't moving anywhere, but the top is moving. So that's how it works. It's a pretty rough guesstimate, I mean, rough intro into weight painting, but in a nutshell, that's pretty much how it works. Now we can do some troubleshooting with this as well. Um, let's go to the pants because there was an issue there. So I'm going to hold down shift and I'm going to select the pants and the bone layer just down here. And we click on the bones for, and we press R and rotate it. You'll see that the pants aren't looking so hot. Upload something like this and you'll be laughed out of Second Life. So what you're going to do is the same thing. We're going to transfer weights from the body to the pants. So I'm going to click on the body first. Hold down shift and click on the pants. Then I'm going to do weight paint and we're going to transfer weights you see it change and you press R and you see it's moving but we got this weird issue right here where the leg is um, this part is giving us some well some lip <laughs> so we can try and maybe increase the heat on this part of the leg and maybe it'll work but we're also selecting that right here so we want to make our radius a little bit smaller so we're not selecting the opposite leg so we press R and you see that it's still not quite right. Something is definitely throwing it off. So we have a few things that we can try doing. It does this because something is amiss. I can't think of the best way to say it other than something is wrong. So what we're going to do is click on the bones and see what also has weights here. This usually happens when there's a weight conflict where there are, are let's see, something is weighted with the same amount of weights where the weight difference isn't enough to make it bend the proper way so we're going to see what has weights here and then we're going to see if removing weight will make it work better or adding weight will make or adding heat will make it work better so let's first see what's calling the bones here so i'm going to bend the leg and you see that something's pulling here <sighs> We're going to go over to the, what is this, Vertex group. And we're just going to scan through 
the um the groups one of the best things you can do is use that script i told you about before the remove unused vertex groups and that'll cut it down the list down dramatically you see this is how it was before we used the script see all of these we would have to shuffle through that and try to see what has weights so we're going to use the script and we're going to use remove unused vertex groups and now cut the list down dramatically so we're just going to click on the leg and we see lower leg and we can uh, try cheating real quick <laughs> and uh, go into the avastar panel and and we can see remove weight see if that changed anything nope doing that makes the leg go straight so we're going to press ctrl z and put the weights back uh you can see knee left and we're going to remove those weights nope that doesn't change anything so let's see m knee left which is weird so we're going to press remove the weights from that hmm that also makes it okay so let's see Upper, so you put that back. Wait, there we go. All right, let's see. Upper leg, lower back. Hmm, what could be causing the trouble? See, knee left is there, and knee left, knee left. Move weights. Hmm. I am stumped. Hang on one second. Let me go poke this a bit. Okay, sorry about that. I knew something was going wrong. I was pressing the wrong button this whole time. Okay, so what you want to do is go down the list and see what's causing you some problems. And see what's um, sharing the weights here. So what I like to do is first we start here where the knee is. And you click on something that has weights in the general area that's causing problems. I say about this. And then you press this uh, delete button the little negative button you press that and you're able to see if it makes any changes if it changes in a negative way well you don't want just press ctrl z and then go down to the next one um so we have knee and then we have knee left here we would raise that and you see it snaps over to where it's supposed to go so that's one way of doing it um you can also see if anything else is here which is what i should have done in the first place by selecting the vertex selection and then pressing the N key so you can open up this little side window and you can click on a dot and you can see well the vertex and you'll see all the groups that have power over uh, this part of the mesh and then you can just scroll down on these like little changer thingies and you can see um, how that affects it as well Whew, sorry about that I guess I should have tested that out beforehand or at least try to remember before I did this part of the tutorial so please forgive me for that so I changed my bones from octahedral to stick so I'm switching back to octahedral because they're easier to grab and that's pretty much it for weight painting right now we press R and we can see that it's moving the way we like it to go and um, whew, that looked painful didn't it you can try putting your avatar in a sitting position because that's one of the main things your character is going to be doing is sitting. So if it looks right when they are sitting, then you're good. I think I saw something crazy over there. So let's try that one more time. Yeah, there is a loose one. So I'm going to go back to stick. Oh, the vertex we were playing with is now. So I'm going to wait paint and it's already, the troublemaker is selected. You can see what I meant by changing with the changing the sliders. Let me just move it back. So yeah, playing with the sliders also helps too when you're trying to really pinpoint problem areas. So I'm going to reset the pose, and you can do that by pressing A and then Alt R and that snaps everything back to the way it was and now we're going into the last steps and that is to generate a shadow map then we're going to texture our shirt and then we're going to import it into second life because it's already rigged now if you already seen the texturing you can just texturing tutorials we did before you can just skip all of that and then jump right into importing so see you guys over in our texture preparing video